This is the story of a backyard build catamaran. Welcome back to another episode. Let's jump right into it. We're here with the beam again. It got fared recently and routed. And all in all, just made a nice smooth surface. Surface preparations, everything. This is what I use for fairing. Beige stuff, really easy to mix. Easy, easy to sand. This is what a beam will lay once it's done. I'm gonna have the floor tied into it and also the engines will be supported by that beam. Having a clean surface is everything when you fiberglass. Without it, you cannot make a good product. So take your time and don't rush through this. What I'm using here is acetone. And I'm using this to give it a general good thorough wipe down. I figured it's worth mentioning here that this is the six ounce fiberglass cloth that I covered the hole with. It's really thin, really light. And this is the bi-axle fiberglass that I am putting on the beams. It has two sides. One side has this woven material. This is the top side. Then the bottom side has this chopped strand fiberglass, which is basically the regular mat. This stuff is strong, especially if used in multiple layers. Here's all the other stuff you'll be needing, or will be needing, is some epoxy. I'm using the slow hardener today, it's about 85 degree. Got some trays there, mixing stick, some bowls just in case I need it. Foam rollers, foam rollers, a key, and a chip brush just in case. Got some gloves, some tape, which I don't think I'm gonna be using. And then we got this little tool, it's called the fiberglass bubble buster absolutely essential to put down by axle fiberglass wonderful tool but expensive well that's it let's get started the best way in my humble opinion is to cut out everything first fiberglassing can be a messy messy scenario and you really have to get organized and go step by step i'm the kind of guy who likes to shoot from the hip and just does everything on the fly but that's really not how you can do it and i paid the price before Mixed up a bunch of epoxy, and then wasn't ready for it. Happens, but hopefully it will only happen one time and you learn your lesson. I'm gonna epoxy this in two steps. One half, let it dry, next day the other half. Sometimes it's really hard to estimate how much epoxy you're gonna use for a project. When it comes to bi-axle fiberglass, you're gonna use about three times as much as you think you're gonna be using. It's just that kind of stuff. Especially if you're doing multiple layers in one run, as we're doing here, we're doing two layers. It's just start mixing. Start just keep mixing. But keep in mind that this stuff will can kick off before you get a chance to apply it. If that happens, just learn something. That's at least that's how I'm looking at it. Actually, it looks kind of cool if it kicks off in the bowl because it starts smoking. It doesn't catch fire, I think. At least it has not caught fire with me yet. I wouldn't be surprised if it does, though. Well, anyway, here we're mixing. Just mix, 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 mix. That's all this boat's about. Mixing epoxy. Followed by applying epoxy. <laughs> you want to give it a good layer. A real good layer, to be honest. In comparison, the 6-ounce fiberglass cloth we use for the boat hulls is so thin you really worry about the fiberglass floating which means there's too much epoxy with this bi axle stuff man just apply it put a good layer on there the bi axle stuff just sucks it up it's crazy it takes forever to get that stuff saturated mm -hmm. 
After you're done applying it, you want to wait about 15, 20 minutes in this kind of environment. I'm using a slow kick, the 206, and it's about 85 degrees. Once it gets tacky, that's when you want to apply the fiberglass. The reasoning behind that, in my opinion, is it just sticks easier. Like if you do it too soon, when you're laying down the cloth, especially here in a minute, I'm going to push it down to the sides. It's really hard to get it to stick. But if you wait long enough, if you're patient, it's all about rhythm when it comes to fiberglass. And if you're patient and you do it in the right rhythm, it's really not that hard. Everything sticks. You're going to see it here in a second. It's really simple. You want to be very generous applying the epoxy. One of the key things you're looking for is once it has enough epoxy on it, once it's saturated, it becomes almost crystal clear. I'm fiberglassing on top of Kusa board, which also got fared, so it's not going to suck up a lot of epoxy. If you're doing this on plywood, you really have to let the epoxy get tacky before you apply the fiberglass. Or you're running the risk of getting air bubbles down the road. It's amazing how wood will just suck it in a half an hour after you're done working. You think everything's fine, but all of a sudden, an air bubble appears. Which isn't the end of the world either. It can be fixed, but it means more work, which means just more time on land, not on the water. And the objective here is to get on the water. Now comes the second layer, which is kind of a little easier to apply, but at the same time, you gotta watch out that you're not moving the fiberglass underneath. And then just like on the first layer, you apply some epoxy until it becomes as good as clear. After you're confident that you have enough saturation, you're gonna use the bubble buster. It's pretty straightforward. As you're rolling, you will see that you get some air bubbles and those will disappear 
towards the end of the cloth. After you roll over it a couple times, you will see there will be no more air that you push in, and that's basically when you know that you're done. And that's it. Everything's fiberglass, two layers. Now it's time to let it dry. Then a little sanding, fairing, and painting. But that will be a different episode. Thanks for watching. Hope it's enjoyed. If you want some more updates, follow us on Instagram. You can find us at Building Matiki Catamaran. Yeah, have a good day. Later, guys.